Just how much should you feed your puppy and when should you feed them? You might also be wondering which bowls or feeders to use too. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. In today's video, we are gonna talk about dog feeding tips for your new puppy. Now before I dive in, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified when the next helpful video goes live. Now this video is aimed at puppy owners who have a puppy that is at least eight weeks or older. Puppies that are younger than this should still be with their litter mates and their mother. They likely will be weaned off of milk at around four to five weeks and transition to eating mush, which usually is a combination of kibble that's been soaked in water and maybe even possibly a milk replacement. Now, typically puppies past the five week mark are either unsoaked mushy kibble or just straight dry kibble for puppies. Most often, the difference between puppy kibble and adult kibble is actually the size of the pieces. Puppy kibble is much smaller in size and easier for young puppies to eat. Now, when you bring your puppy home at around eight weeks or older, you're gonna give your puppy the same kibble that they were on at the breeder's home until you transition them to a new kibble that you may prefer to give them. Now, whatever food you transition a puppy to, just make sure you go slow. You may end up transitioning them over a few weeks. Now, this is actually gonna mean that we mix in a little of the old to a little of the new, just a little bit at a time. We never wanna transition a puppy to new food instantly as they really can have severe upset tummy and diarrhea. Be aware that your new puppy is going to go through a pretty big change when they transition into your home, and they might be overwhelmed by all the new people and things in your home. Now, this means that they may not eat their meals consistently, and they may not take treats from you either. They may sporadically eat, this is all normal for a new puppy. We always wanna keep our expectations low and our patience high when working with brand new puppies. For more information on surviving the first 24 hours with a new puppy, check out this video here. Now, most puppies need at least three meals months of age. When they get to about six months of age, we can actually decrease this to about two meals a day. Now, the reason that we wanna feed puppies younger than six months, at least three meals a day is that puppies that have an empty tummy for far too long are going to likely spit up yellow bile due to an upset tummy. They aren't quite ready to go for longer durations of time in between those meals just yet. Now, as your puppy grows and matures, the stomach can handle going longer periods of time in between those meals. It's always best to feed your puppy at a regularly scheduled meal time instead of free feeding. Now, there are a couple of main reasons why we schedule our pups at meal times. Number one, when you stick to a scheduled meal, you can really better predict when your puppy needs to go out and go potty. This is gonna be very important during the beginning potty training stage. Now, for more information on puppy potty training, be sure to check out that free resource called the New Puppy Starter Kit. The link to this resource is below this video, as with any of the other resources or products I recommend. They will always be found in the description below the video. Now, we typically take a puppy out to go potty a few minutes after they've eaten their meal. Now, for some puppies, this may only be a few moments, while others, it may be closer to 15 to 20 minutes after eating. Be sure to use that potty training chart inside the new puppy starter kit to keep track of what's happening and when. It can really help you see a pattern in your pup's bathroom habits. And it's a free printable resource that's available for you and your puppy to use. Okay, reason number two. We wanna make sure that our puppy is getting just the right amount of a balanced diet. Free feeding or letting your puppy eat whenever they can is going to lead to some overeating. It's very easy to overfeed a puppy this way. Statistically, over 54% of American dogs are already overweight. We don't wanna to add to that statistic. Besides, an overweight puppy means that you're gonna to have to deal with health issues down the road. All right, reason number three. Feeding on a set schedule and at a set time helps you stay more focused on what's in your dog's dish and if they ate all their food or not. Now, a break in their consistent eating habit can be a warning sign of illness, and you might not notice this if your dog always has their food down all the time. All right, number four. Feeding at mealtimes also helps create a little bit more value with their food, since it isn't always available. This can be especially important for training. Now, when food left down is always available, it isn't as valuable. When food has more value, as in it's only available at certain times of the day, it can be used as a reinforcer for skills you're trying to teach your puppy. 
because it has more value. Now, on a side note, if you put your puppy's food down and they don't eat it up within about 10 to 15 minutes, don't leave it down. Instead, pick it up and either toss it out if it's mushy or save it for the next meal. Just don't overfeed at that next meal. Make sure the amount that's in the dish is the same serving size at each meal. Now this means that you just may have to add a little bit more if your pup didn't eat as much at that last meal. Now, you might be wondering just how much to feed your puppy. How much to feed your puppy will really depend on many factors, including size and weight and age and breed and activity level. The label on the dog food bag really should be your guide, as each food has a different caloric makeup, and the manufacturers can suggest the proper amount based on the weight of your dog. Keep in mind that some manufacturers want you to buy a little bit more of their products, so they may recommend levels that may be just a little higher on the scale. Now, be sure to read that label very closely. Some dog food bags recommend an amount that is good for a pup at their age, while others recommend that you feed based on what their potential might be as an adult. Personally, I follow the guidelines in the bag based on what their current weight is. It's gonna also be important to speak to your veterinarian about your dog's diet. They really have a better recommendation than what's on the side of the bag. If you're trying to find out which food might be the best for your pup, we have a video all about that, and you can check it out here. Or you can click the link below the video after you're done watching this one. What about the bowl versus the puzzle feeder versus enrichment activities for feeding? Now, if your pup is eating too fast, you can use various slow bowl feeders or puzzle toys or enrichment activities to slow down the eating process. While these things may slow the consumption rate, you will need to work on your pup's excitement level around the food. This is gonna take time and training. Now Pickles, my Cavalier, loves eating his meal from a snuffle mat or even a busy box. My busy boxes are filled with all sorts of things. Sometimes they're filled with old clothes that we were going to donate. Other times they're filled with shredded paper, like the ones that come in a delivery box. I filled boxes with ball pit balls and even empty water bottles. He loves digging for and sniffing out his kibble. Now my Great Dane, on the other hand, she just loves food so much, she would chow it down way too fast. So with her, we actually use a slow bowl feeder at her mealtimes. And the bowl is gonna help her slow her eating way down so she doesn't choke and she doesn't throw it back up or cause too much gas in her system. Now, if your dog is eating way too fast, be sure to watch this video here all about the different ways to slow down your dog's eating. There are some reasons why your dog might not eat out of their bowl. Sometimes we have to do a little detective work before we can just jump to the conclusion that the dog is refusing to eat because they just don't like the food. Now, on a side note, resist the urge to doctor your dog's food up with other tasty things like gravies and cheeses and even table scraps. You can actually create a really picky eater that holds out for the extra tasty stuff if you keep doctoring up their food. Instead, if you find that your dog is not eating their food, first check out to see if their collar or their tags are hitting the side of the dish. This can really startle your pup and it creates a negative association with eating. Next, Check the dish itself. Some pups dislike the reflections from a metal bowl, while others may find the size of the bowl too narrow. Now, my dog Pickles, he actually hates eating out of bowls where his whiskers touch the sides. He freaks out by that, so we really have to make sure that his water bowl and his food dishes are wider than the length of his whiskers. Some dogs really love foraging activities and they need a puzzle toy to work through to get their food. Now I have a few puzzle toy links in the description below this video. One of my favorites is a babala, and Pickles actually loves batting his around to make the food pop out. I'm also a big fan of using a portion of your dog's meal as training opportunities. Now, in the pro level of my online puppy training program, we have some of our students working on the hashtag 50 kibble challenge. This really just means that we're taking 50 pieces of kibble from their dog's meal, setting it aside, and we're using it throughout the day to reinforce all the things we wanna see more of from our dogs. Now, we can also use it during structured training lessons as well. When we take the kibble out of their meal, we know we aren't overfeeding them either. Now, the link to that course can also be found in the description below the video. Take a look. See if it's something that you'd be interested in joining. I'd love to help you with your dog's training. It's really a great way for you and your pup to play and train together and learn which order you should teach your pup all the new skills that they need to know to be safe and follow cues when you ask. Now, if you're wondering about those treats, first, 
just know that less than 10% of your dog's daily diet should be made up of treats. This includes things like puppered freeze-dried beef livers or wellness soft training treats or even buffalo bits. Now this video here can tell you all about the training treats and point you in the right direction of the variety of treats that you might try with your pup. Now before I share my last tip with you, if you found value in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more lessons like this one. All right, last but not least, a really popular question that we get pretty often is, can we feed our dog people food? Well, the answer is yes and no. Let me explain. First, the bad news. The bad news is there are actually some foods that are pretty toxic to your dogs. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we avoid those ones. So for example, we wanna make sure that our dog's not eating chocolate or caffeine or onions or garlic, apple seeds, and anything with xylitol. Now, if you want a full list, you can always check out our post inside the Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon Facebook group. You can find a link to that group, you guessed it, in the description below this video. Now for the good news, there are several foods that you can give your dog that can actually be considered high value treats this means your dog may be more eager to work for them and they would love to receive them as training treats or they may carry more value in the training process. Keep in mind that your dog actually has preferences and will determine which of these foods are more valuable than others. Now we may think hot dogs are high value, but some dogs don't love hot dogs. But typically if a food is stinky, smelly, or slimy, it's a good bet that your dog is gonna think it's high value. Now we tend to use higher value treats with the tougher tasks that we're working on. And we wanna make sure that we're reinforcing with higher value treats when a puppy is working harder to learn a new skill like recall or the come cue. Now that one can really be tough if your pup is distracted by something outside while off leash. This is definitely something that we cover in great detail inside our 30 day to puppy perfection program. Okay, back to higher value treats. So maybe your dog does like hot dogs or boiled chicken or cheese or even peanut butter. For many dogs, these are considered higher value. Just make sure that peanut butter doesn't contain xylitol. Now an all natural peanut butter with limited ingredients really is your best bet. Now, in the comments below, tell me which kind of dish or puzzle toy your dog prefers to eat out of. 